Welcome to a journey across the cosmos where we will explore the gargantuan celestial bodies that exist in our universe, the stars. Today's focus is on the largest star in existence and the question, how big can they possibly get? Our universe is a vast expanse teeming with a staggering number of stars. Each one of these celestial bodies is an astronomical marvel in its own right. From the smallest red dwarf stars with diameters as tiny as one-tenth that of our sun, to the colossal giants that dwarf any scale we're used to. Speaking of scales, let's take a moment to appreciate our own star, the sun. With a diameter of 1.39 million kilometers, it's so large that one million Earths could fit inside it. But in the grand scheme of things, our sun is rather average. Now let's take a quantum leap to the realm of the truly gigantic stars like UI Scuti and Vicanus Majoris. These are not just stars, they are hypergiants. UI Scuti, the current record holder for the largest known star, measures a mind-boggling 1.4 billion kilometers in diameter. That's over a thousand times larger than the sun. V.I. Canis Majoris, another hypergiant, is not far behind, with a diameter of 1.2 billion kilometers. But what makes these stars so colossal? It all boils down to their mass and the stage of their life cycle. The more massive a star is, the larger it becomes. And when a star reaches the end of its life cycle, it expands into a red giant or a supergiant, becoming many times its original size. So we've seen how massive these stars can be, but is there a limit? How big can stars possibly get? As we delve deeper into the cosmos, these are the questions that drive our curiosity and our search for answers. In our universe, where the extraordinary is ordinary, the largest stars are a testament to the limitless wonders that await us. To understand the size limits of stars, we first need to delve into their formation and life cycle. Picture this. A dense molecular cloud core, massive and swirling with dust and gas. The gravity within these cores is so immense that it causes them to collapse in on themselves. This gravitational collapse sparks the birth of a star. These cores, mind you, are not small by any means. They can range from hundreds to millions of times the mass of our sun. As the core collapses, it heats up, and when it gets hot enough, nuclear fusion kicks off. This is the very heart of a star, where hydrogen atoms slam together to form helium, releasing a tremendous amount of energy in the process. This energy works against gravity, creating an equilibrium that allows the star to shine for billions of years. This stage of a star's life, where it's burning hydrogen into helium, is known as the main sequence stage. But what happens next? Well, the mass of the star determines its life cycle. Lower mass stars, like our sun, will eventually exhaust their hydrogen fuel. When this happens, the core contracts and heats up, while the outer layers expand. The star then becomes a red giant. On the other hand, stars with more mass go through a series of stages, burning heavier and heavier elements until they reach iron. Upon reaching iron, they can't extract any more energy through fusion, leading to a catastrophic supernova explosion. So, the size of a star isn't only a product of its formation, but also its life cycle. A star's mass, its fuel, and how it burns that fuel all play a crucial role in determining its size. From the initial collapse of a molecular cloud core to the fiery furnace of nuclear fusion, each stage of a star's life contributes to its eventual size. But now that we understand this, we must ask ourselves, what's the upper limit? This brings us to a fundamental concept in astrophysics, the Eddington Limit, named after the renowned British astrophysicist Sir Arthur Eddington. This principle describes a critical balance in the life of a star. Let's imagine a star as a cosmic tug of war. On one side, we have the force of radiation, a result of the nuclear fusion happening at the star's core, pushing outwards. On the other side, we have gravity, born from the star's massive amount of matter, pulling everything inwards. The point at which these two forces are equal, that's the Eddington limit. So why is this balance so crucial? Well, it directly influences the formation and size of a star. As long as the star's radiation is equal to or less than its gravity, it can continue to accumulate matter and grow. However, if the radiation exceeds the gravity, the star will start to shed its outer layers, essentially blowing itself apart. This restricts the star's growth and ultimately determines its maximum possible size. But the Eddington limit isn't just a theoretical concept, it has real-world implications as well. For example, it helps astronomers predict the brightness of a star. If a star is radiating at its Eddington limit, it's likely to be incredibly bright. 
possibly even visible from Earth with the naked eye. The Eddington limit also sheds light on the life cycle of stars. Those exceeding this limit are likely to experience violent outbursts, blowing off their outer layers in a cosmic spectacle. These outbursts can lead to the formation of supernovae, some of the most energetic events in the universe. So, the Eddington limit provides a theoretical cap on star size. But what does this mean in terms of actual dimensions? Now that we understand the factors that limit star size, let's look at some of the largest stars we know of. Our first stop is UY Scuti, which currently holds the title for the largest star, by volume. This red supergiant in the constellation Scutum has a radius around 1,700 times that of our Sun. If placed at the center of our solar system, its outer surface would extend beyond the orbit of Jupiter. Next, we have V.Y. Canis Majoris, another red supergiant, located in the constellation Canis Major. Its diameter is about 1,800 to 2,100 times that of the Sun. That's almost as large as U.I. Scuti, and its sheer size is simply mind-boggling. Then there's the famous Betelgeuse in the constellation Orion, a star we've all heard of and one of the brightest in our night sky. This red supergiant's diameter varies between 500 and 900 times that of the Sun. Though these numbers are astonishing, they come with a caveat. Measuring the sizes of stars is a remarkably challenging task due to their variable nature and distance from Earth. What we perceive as the surface of a star is actually a layer where the star becomes transparent to light, and this layer can expand and contract. Also, the stars are so far away that their apparent sizes in our sky are incredibly small. Furthermore, these stars are not perfect spheres, but have irregular shapes due to their rapid rotation and magnetic fields. Hence, the values mentioned are averages, and the actual sizes may vary. Despite these challenges, the immense sizes of these stars are undeniably impressive. They are the true giants of the cosmos, each one a testament to the incredible diversity and scale of the universe. These stars are the true titans of the universe, dwarfing our sun and defying our comprehension, but even they have their limits. So how big can stars possibly get? This is a question that has fascinated astronomers and astrophysicists for centuries, based on the principles of the Eddington Limit, a theoretical barrier that determines the maximum luminosity a star can have before radiation pressure overcomes gravity. And observations of the largest known stars the current scientific consensus estimates the maximum possible star size to be around 150 solar masses. In terms of diameter, this translates to an awe-inspiring 1.7 billion kilometers. To put that into perspective, it's about 12 times the diameter of the Sun. These are stars of such colossal scale that if placed in our solar system, they would engulf the orbits of the inner planets and extend beyond the asteroid belt. So there we have it. The largest stars in existence can reach up to 1.7 billion kilometers in diameter, a truly mind-boggling scale.